And thanks for staying with us. Uh, the president has finally made some changes in his government. Uh, but the president, as we know, has failed to downsize his government in that latest move to carry out what is now being described as a reshuffle, or you may want to call it a replacement. Uh, Speaker of Parliament Alban Bagman put before the House earlier today some seven names of serving and incoming appointees who would now be serving in their new capacities as either ministers or deputy ministers of state. Listen to the Speaker. Member, member of Parliament for Inshiaso, as Deputy Minister for Trade and Industry, subject, 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 subject to the approval of Parliament. Mr. Speaker, it is my hope that the approval of the above named ministers designate and deputy minister designate can be done expeditiously to enable me to fill the vacant positions in the government as soon as possible. Yours sincerely, Nana Adudankwa Akufadu. Honorable members, this Honourable members, I accordingly refer this communication to the Appointments Committee for consideration and report to the House. I I want to, on behalf of members, congratulate the members of parliament who have met the high consideration of His Excellency and have been given the opportunity to go through the vetting by this house. Well, Speaker of Parliament, Alban Babin there, but what is uh, now clear is that the President has failed to downsize when his own government is asking Ghanaians to share the burden of the austere economic times in which we find ourselves. Don't forget that there's a lot of mounting pressure uh, even ahead uh, of this announcement where, of course, the MPs were expecting that the Finance Minister uh, will be redesignated or perhaps fired as the pressure was earlier. But why hasn't that happened and what's likely to be the impact on his own government and on the state as well? I want to bring in Dr. Asa Santi, who's a political scientist at the University of Ghana. Uh, Professor Amwako Ba is uh, also a political scientist at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Uh, Benjamin Kwashi is uh, the NDC's uh, Chairperson of Council of Elders in South Africa. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Let me start off with you, Professor Amwako Ba. I mean, has your expectations uh, be been met, given what it is that the President has done? Uh, it's been termed a reshuffle, but some see it as a replacement. What's your take on this? Uh, Professor Mwakobi, if you can hear me, I'm just asking you about uh, your take on this latest uh, announcement that we're seeing well, yes. from, from the speaker. Yes, loud and clear now. Okay, what he did is not what is critical. That is not what is needed. We don't need musical chairs. We need reduction in numbers of appointees so that government uh, expenditure goes down. Every action the president takes now must be in that line. Reduction of expenditure. This government the reason why inflation is so high, you don't seem to be able to do anything, is because of the fiscal policy of the government. We tend to talk about the monetary policy from Bank of Ghana. That's not where it is. It is the fiscal policy. We are spending more money than we take in. 
right? And the uh, uh, debt, debt servicing alone, the uh, finance minister says, uh, uh, takes more than 50% of the revenue. Servicing. How are we going to make this work? The only way is to cut the budget, the government expenditure budget. That's it. There's no, no other way. Even uh, infrastructure development must be suspended for a while. You should group them, critical uh, to normal, and so forth, though you know which ones to tackle first. Some projects we just started, suspend them. Suspend all those. But I'm not saying we shouldn't do anything at all. If you have dug up the road or going to attack, see, don't be in such a hurry to go and fix it, uh, asphalt it, and all that, because you don't have money. Let them know, please, can't do it now. We're sorry, we didn't consider certain things. Now it's not necessary uh, to suspend this thing. We'll put a grader on it. This road is going to be cut very surface at least once a month until we are in such a position to do it permanent. That's what you do. It shows you are serious. It shows this is a uh, critical situation. But we are behaving as business as usual. You know, this one is out. We replace him, this and that. The Dubai here has been out all this time. But they're not able to do it. If we are serious, we will leave that position uh, temporarily open. As the minister and those involved, can you maintain the situation for a while? Yes, keep going. If you, if you can, you should tell them, find a way to do it. That's how you do it, it's an emergency. No, we are not doing that. Just bring this one, this one goes here, this one comes. The same expenditure we are looking at. We are not going to solve this problem this way. We can't. Some of these things we are doing, government appointees, if you reduce them, it will go a long way to help with the uh, debt, debt restriction. People holding bonds. But we are not thinking about that. That is uh, from, for, uh, from a foreign country, it looks like. We do the work where we want, and the problem is still there. We don't tackle it head on. That's because these people behave as if they are the only ones who know how to do something. Nobody else can do it except them. This is where we are. Uh, if you look at some of the uh, appointments that are being made now, we can't help but to place people there. For instance, the trades ministry became vacant after the resignation of the uh, trades, former trades minister, Alan Kojitramating. Then we have uh, the other, uh, which is the agric ministry, becoming vacant as a result of what it is that um, the Dr. Akoto has decided to do to run for president. All of these position, uh, positions became vacant. So the president had no choice but to fill them up with political appointees. Well, some of them you have to like pay them. Like, I'm comfortable with both. Some have to do the thing. They don't need to pay them. If everyone is out, get them to double up and, and make it work. That's how you do it in an emergency. It's not business as usual for you to fill every position and to fill and that's what he's doing. There is no attempt to raise revenue except tax, 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 tax. What they don't realize right? it is not only tax you can do to bring money to the blue for the tax. You tax people, then take them from there to go on, uh, they threaten to go on strike. They're all sudden, boom, 70% increment for sellers. Are you kidding me? 30%? What country does that? How can you increase somebody's government working, existing workers' salary 30% in this climate? How? Mm. How is that possible? The government is so broke that we are not supposed to hire any, any new person. Now, you have pretty much hired 30% of the existing 700,000 people. About 200,000 more people to hire. This increase you just made is almost a support for that. Don't we see it? And we accept it? We keep going, so the government raises uh, salary, and then taxes also go up, prices also go up. Government employees are uh, 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 the pay are increased, so they can handle it more. So. How about the rest of the people in the country? Nobody is mm. increasing anything. Right. And the hardship is only thing that we are just raise, raise, raise. We are all raising ourselves up. Makes no sense. Mm. And you tax, 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 you get to a point, it's a diminishing return. Because if I buy, used to buy two things, I'm buying one. The government is getting the same tax it, it, it used to get when it was only 10%. Now it's 
who doesn't save money. Where's the point? Mm. That's what's going on. You just hire people, hire people. This country, oh, I don't know what to say. I don't know. This is not the man I know. This president, it's not a man I know. Right? He's not a man I know. Now he doesn't listen to anything. That's what. But the country doesn't belong to him alone and his, his uh, uh, team folks. It's not his. We we'll have to sit aside and let it go down the drain. No. To their city. If they don't work hard to come to agreement on this uh, debt risk, we are big Okay. Uh, all right. We are big mm. uh, Dr. Banif, you, you could just uh, hold on for us uh, briefly. Let's also bring in Dr. Sassanti. Uh, Doc, and of course, um, Dr. Ban raising some points about the economic times in which we find ourselves and the need to downsize. Uh, but we've, we've kept on for more than a year in the second term of the president. So why not wait until, of course, if any change will happen, we'll see what the next leader will do. I think um, um, I share the same uh, views with uh, Dr. Marco Ban. Um, we don't need um, the size that we have now. We need a reduction of the size because uh, we are cash trapped. We don't have resources and there's a need for us to ensure that the little that we have can sustain us. So uh, one would have expected the president to forget about the deputy ministers and then bring in only the, the, the ministers, the two ministers, substantive ministers who would take positions of agriculture and what trade. But the deputy, I disagree with the president. Uh, why am I saying that? Because we want to downsize. Uh, and for the time that these people have been out of office, we still have the bureaucracy supporting. The real work, the speed work is done by the bureaucracy. So uh, I don't think we need uh, the deputy ministers at all. We don't need them. We need the substantive ministers, the two, um, and the deputies, uh, the the bureaucrats can support that. Do, do you but have this is a time? Yeah. Do, do, do you have an this ideal? Do you have an ideal number, uh, which you would call okay for such an austere time in which we find ourselves? I mean, Britain, which is one of the richest countries in the world, has uh, less than 125 ministers. We, as a poor country, mm. we have over 80. What is it that we have seen that they have not seen? Right. What is it that we have that they don't have? Uh, America, and they have few numbers. Nigeria, even within the South region, we are talking about 40s. All right. I believe that we can even stay up to 19. The constitution said you need a cabinet ministers of what, 19? All right. Let them work. And then the public servants uh, will come in. I am even. Uh, this time around, looking at a situation where we can look at even 16, uh, who would double as ministers and regional ministers. 16? Yes, <laughs> that, we have 16 that, regions. We have 16 regions. That, that's quite of extreme, course, isn't we'll be it? Caught, yeah, be, be, uh, because we'll be look, look at the just the positions that we have to fill constitutionally. The regional yeah, minister, ministerial we'll positions. That one, we yeah. need to, you know, do something mm -hmm. with, in terms of amendment right. and other... Uh, so that we can get around. Other than that, I would suggest that we need 16. That 16 will represent 16 regions and at the same time double as our ministers. Mm. And to be able to meet that constitutional, you know, threshold, you can add three or four to it so that you meet what? The cabinet requirement. All right. You don't, all that I'm saying that you don't need more than 19 or 20. That's all. The numbers do not matter. It is one, their ability to share in the vision of the president and they are prepared to work. Now, I mean, most of them, I wouldn't say most of them, but a number of them are going out uh, as what, you know, going to contest for flag bearership and the rest of them. Uh, there are uh, who follow, those who follow them and they are following them and then uh, trying to canvass for them to get votes and whatnot. We don't, that is not what we are interested in. We are interested in uh, every member of the party helping the president to succeed so that the president can leave a legacy on which they can stand on and contest. Remember that election is a contest of ideas and a referendum of your work. What work is the president going to leave for the second tenure that they are going to what, derive, you know, benefit from and use to campaign to become what, the president or whatever. 
And that, for me, is critical. So we need the size to go down. Mm -hmm. Not only that, we need people to be focused and support the president to deliver on his mandate. And then expenditure must be down. We need expenditure. I understand that all these things that we are moving people from one place to the other, it's constitutional reshuffle, uh, theoretically, all right? You bring people in to inject energies. You bring people in uh, as we are changing focus and direction because now we are going the IMF way, all things being equal. So we need people who have the wherewithal to be able to what, you know, drive us to that promised land and the rest of them. Uh, but the reality is that we don't need the size that we have. We need to come down and we need to ensure that all these things work and work proper. Otherwise, yes, you can have IMF, you can have resources, but you dissipate them in no time because you'll be paying a huge bill for ministerial appointments. Okay, let's let's hear from Dr. Makuban on, on this once more. Uh, the point you're making that we need fresh ideas. But Dr. Makuban, if we indeed need fresh ideas, why not target the sectors that are underperforming? For instance, you look at, at our economy now, it's not doing too well. A reason for which you have some MPs, even from the New Patriotic Party side, say, well, bring in some fresh ideas. All we have now is a Minister of State in charge of finance, by the way. How are we going to measure performance? They don't have money. Just about all the ministries don't get the money they need to perform. So how are you going to measure its performance when you don't give the tools it needs to perform? That's the problem. This has been going on for quite a long time, but they've been able to hide it. Well, shenanigans, we are cutting short here. We are this, 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 and we are doing that. And no, it's not true. Most of it is not true. You understand? So how do you, this is part of the reason why it, the president finds it difficult to even reach a full problem. Because if the person hasn't done anything wrong, and you have not given him the, the money he needs to perform, mm. how do you measure his performance? That's the problem. It's arbitrary. But you are lucky. Some have left. So now, don't fill the position so quickly. Ministry of Trade, they have three. Two deputies. So, the, the, the substantive business for that one is a major ministry. It has to be filled. Okay, fine. Even that, you can suspend it for a little bit. Three months is enough to save some money. You understand? But no, we will come back very quickly to where we were before. I think we are doing okay. We are not doing okay. But any way you can uh, uh, save money, that's what you do. Yeah, but Doc, Doc, what, what difference will even make if you have uh, just a few ministers, just a few, away for three months, by the way. I understand. It's not only the money to save. It is the appearance to show people that you are serious, you are aware of where you are. If you behave the way we are behaving, it means everything is okay. This is business as usual. It is not business as usual. So do something for outsiders to see, okay, and they know where they are. They are very serious now. Look at the go this. It's not a lot of money. In practice, you say appearances are everything. And that's what I'm talking about. But he's not taking advantage of what is going on. And want to come back very quickly to where it was before. I see everything. Let's wait and see what's going to happen. You see, it's primarily because of the Bank of Ghana that this government is not performing. We are helping. The Bank of Ghana is helping the government fail. It is not the job of the Bank of Ghana to finance the government. Sometimes when I say that, I think some people don't understand it. The Bank of Ghana is collecting money every month, giving it to the government in the form of treasury bills. This is why the government is so bloated and still don't do anything about it. If you get to a point where the Bank of Ghana is put now, they have to, because IMF has told them to stop. Let's see the next two months. If the IMF, uh, Bank of Ghana doesn't give the government money, where is the government going to find money to pay salary? Then you'll be forced. You have no choice but to cut down on the number of people because whatever money is left is not going to be enough to go around. This is how it's supposed to work. But no, every month, Bank of Ghana is turning to a susu and give it to the government. Give it to the government. And then the debt keeps going up. The president too doesn't pay any attention because he's not under any pressure so he keeps the same number of people. Mm. This is what is going on. Mm.
Right. Uh, thanks, Doc. Uh, let me bring in uh, Benjamin Kwashi, of course, uh, he belongs to the NDC, speaking as, uh, to, to us um, live from South Africa now. Uh, but Benjamin, I recall that your party was asking uh, for a reduction in, in the size. That has not happened. Uh, at least the speaker now has confirmed that to us. Uh, very well. Um, you know, to me and to my party, I don't think we are surprised because um, this, this president has clearly demonstrated to us that he doesn't listen to anybody. You don't call this a reshuffle. Um, this, this rather dead administration of Nanado has just uh, filled four vacant positions that, that, that ministers resigned from and uh, have put in uh, people there. You see, um, it, it becomes very difficult for us as a nation to talk about building uh, the nation together when you have a president who doesn't listen, when you have a president who thinks that, like Dr. Amakuba says, that it's all about him. It, it doesn't augur well with the, the economy. Just uh, yesterday, the finance minister is asking us that if we don't get this deal uh, up, uh, the economy is going to crash. You would expect that the president, knowing very well the difficulties we find ourselves in as a nation, would have said those ministers who have resigned, uh, those ministries that are empty, uh, vacant in terms of ministers, there are bureaucrats in the, in, in the ministries that will take up these positions and ensure that government machinery works. Unfortunately, uh, for me, from where I sit, it's all about the president uh, trying to get his people there to have a bite of the, uh, uh, of the national cake. Uh, you ask yourself that what, what at all is this president waiting for before he takes decisions befitting of the commander in chief of the Ghana Armed Forces and, and the leader of our country? Because look, prior to this uh, uh, announcement, you were expecting that the president would have asked the finance minister to take leave because obviously his own ministers and members of parliament have said they don't trust in his process to get us this IMF deal. What does the president do? He keeps him there and he brings in other ministers just again to overburden the Ghanaian taxpayer. Is it surprising? It's not, because this is a president that told us in parliament that he was in a hurry uh, uh, to develop the country Ghana. Little did we know that he was in a hurry to run us into a ditch. He's gotten us into the ditch, and instead of helping us all, helping come out of the ditch, he still puts us there. I think it's time that uh, we all call on the president and the government to know that, look, Ghanaians are wide descending. Ghanaians are now wide awake. We are saying that if you want us to go through these haircuts you want us to do, show leadership. Be the first people that will take steps, that will let the citizenry believe that, oh, the presidency is doing this, the presidency is doing that. You don't bungle around ministers that have resigned and then you put new ministers there. What do you expect of the taxpayer? Yeah, but, but, again? Yeah, but when, when this comes up, the feeling is it's just mere political rhetoric. The fact that we've not done any scientific search at all to see uh, what it is that uh, a large size government will take away uh, from the people of Ghana. There's no scientific evidence to that, is there? There is no scientific evidence, but we should use common sense. We are not in normal times. We all need to admit that we are not in normal times. I, I, I believe that people have spoken enough. The bureaucrats, the technocrats, people have spoken. Uh, I just heard Dr. Makuba, I have also heard uh, Dr. Asante. And these are people that are giving us cogent reasons why the president should listen and ensure that we develop this country, we help this country out of the tantrum that we find ourselves in. If the president is not listening, the country suffers. He is part of the system and he is making it worse than, than, than we ever thought. I, I believe that a John Mahama administration under such circumstances like what we find ourselves in will listen. Because remember, President Mahama has always called for a national dialogue. The dialogue will bring the technocrats and the people who know best to say, look, you have 30 ministers, downsize them. Do this, do that. This government has refused. There's no national uh, uh, forum to discuss our predicament as a country. And he's just running the country as if he's running his personal business. And this is, this is just not right. Yeah, but he's still within the remits of the law, isn't it? Uh, he's not violated any, any law by keeping these ministers there. Well, he's not violated any law, but then he has he violated laws when he's telling us to, 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 to have haircuts? Has he violated laws when after everything the citizenry has done and they are profligate spending, today the citizenry have to pay for it? Is it, is it lawful? Is it, is it, you know, sometimes the law is there, then we also need to apply a bit of quote-unquote common sense here.
The country is not in normal time. As a president, as a leader, show leadership. Show leadership. These four ministries that were vacant, we were going to save at least some little money for the public purse. Is it necessary for, you don't call this a reshuffle. So when I saw the headlines that the president has reshuffled, he has not reshuffled. He's not done anything reshuffled. What, what, he what just does filled it? vacancies. He okay. just filled vacancies. He's just, I, 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 I'm bleeding to, I, I'm, 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 I'm going to think and say, what is uh, 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 Katie Hammond doing in the trade and industry ministry? What does he bring on board in the trade and industry ministry that will help us with this IMF negotiations? Is it, a, is it to say that during uh, the impeachment hearing for, for the censure motion for the finance minister that he did a good job for the party? Are they rewarding well, I, him? I guess you're impugning ill motives here. We, we don't have any evidence to back that. I don't have the evidence, but I'm asking. It's a, it's a question I'm asking. Is it that the president is rewarding him? Because honestly, I think that that ministry has deputy ministers that are still at post. Why are you appointing a substantive minister? What does Katie Hammond bring on board? What does he bring on board? Maybe we don't know. But for me, and from where I sit, I've had my MPP people just numb. They are not saying anything about this uh, so-called racial food. Because you can't defend this. It's indefensible. Uh, Do Dr. Asante, let me, let me find out from you uh, the, the point about Katie Hammond. Is it fair to be raising such concerns at this moment? Oh, I don't, uh, for ministry appointment, anybody can be in any position, mm. all right? You don't need special expertise or knowledge to be able to fill certain vacancies because the technicals are those who do the speed work and they assist them. Oh, okay, right? so all you're suggesting you then that we can even do away with a number, a number of the, the ministers, and we'll still have these ministries running? Yes, you can reduce them because the, the technicals, the bureaucrats are there. They support, all right? But what I want to say is that you don't need special knowledge to be in any ministry position. No. All that you need is that you are in tune with the vision of the president and that you have dedicated yourself to the implementation of the policies that will be designed and then pushed into your ministry to what? Execute. That's it. But what we are saying is that our focus must be on the science. And you, you, you did say that there is no scientific basis Yes. Uh, for, you know, talking about the size of, I disagree with you. Mm. Why am I saying that? You don't need any science. If you are spending 1,000 Ghana on each of the ministers, and we said you have 80, and said bring it to 20, what scientific basis do you need again? You need just, you know, the figures to know that you have been able to say about 60 or 80. If you save 80 and you have 20, that uh, you are paying for. That is, more, that is a science. Some, some I mean, say government is, is balancing that by putting a freeze, for instance, on, on public sector employment. Oh, but, uh, I mean, do you, do you take that? Uh, they said that they have reduced the, uh, you, know, you know, per diem and the, uh, the uh, monument and all that. And substantial figures. Have they provided that with any figures? They said they've reduced and all that. How much did they take? as a whole, which the fraction is what they are talking about. We don't know, all right? There hasn't been any uh, communication to that effect. But what we are saying that if you reduce the number, remember that little drops of water make the ocean. Oh. So even if it's one Ghana cities, we are saying that when you reduce and we, 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 we bring the figure down, we can also go into other areas. That is leadership by example. You are calling for haircut. Uh, tighten your belt, uh, help this country, otherwise it will crash and all that. In what about your own self? What have you done mm. about your lifestyle, mm. your leadership style, which we are paying and paying so much? That is the crust of the matter. And that doesn't bode well for a country which is struggling to get resources. Because if you maintain this ministers, what my understanding is that at the end of the day, you are the money that you receive from IMF and all that much is going to go into a servicing uh, these are uh, paying these ministers mm. and all that. And is that why we quickly went for the IMF and all that? Then right. we are not ensuring value mm. for money. And this is the time that they need to take certain important decisions. But I am just advising them. It's not compulsory. They can either take it or leave it. They need, it is in their own interest to fix this economy. Otherwise, I don't know how they are going to campaign. Because take it or leave it. Ghanaians, irrespective of their parties, their ideology, what they believe in, they believe that economy is the most important variable that they consider when right. they are voting. So it is incumbent upon them to mm. fix the economy right. and then make sure that people, means of livelihoods are maintained and then people can go about their normal duty 
and get what means of mm -hmm. livelihood. Otherwise, the day of accountability, when it comes, um, the story will be too different. Well, we need to go, Dr. Asasanti. Thank you. Uh, Benjamin Kwashi, you have uh, a final advice to the president on this? Well, the president has... Kindly, kindly unmute for me so I can hear the points you're making. Okay, very well. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, loud and clear. Okay. So what I'm saying is that, that we have a president who has made it clear that he's not going to listen to anybody. A president who doesn't even listen to his own party folks when they tell him that, look, things are not going right. Things are not well. You need to do A, B, C, D. He does what he pleases. This is a president that's time with that number has not shown any sign of good faith in, in, in helping the Ghanaian economy grow. I can all say that um, we, we as a country would learn from what has happened and we ensure that going into elections, we remember the elections as consequences. We told Ghanaians, but we are not here to say we told you so. The NDC will come up with the alternative government. The NDC will ensure that our economy runs back to where it was when we handed over the, mm. the, the governance of the country to, mm. to the rather rather disappointing Nana Akufuado Baumi administration. Mm. Uh, Dr. Amakoba, for you? Call for me to advise the president because he has demonstrated over and over again that he doesn't listen to advice. He said, uh, what he wants, he wants to do, what a good advice, that's what he's going to do. But it is not his country. It's going to start, really. Uh, the man we elected, we need that man back, not this one. The man we elected in 2016, that's the one we need back. The all die, be die man, that's the one we need back. You know, I sat in his office looking at him, tears in his eyes, talking to me. Now, that's not that. Now he doesn't listen to anyone. He does what he wants. It's almost as if he doesn't care about the country. His party, forget it. This is why the party MPP doesn't vote for it. I say we should stand up. The party comes before the president. That's what I'm telling you. Mm. Stand right. up. You are the one who can save the country. All right, then. Force him to do the things he's supposed to. Unfortunately, everybody wants the position. And so you keep quiet, hoping that if your name comes up, then eh? you go and do it. They're still doing that. You know, what the Honorable said about uh, Katie Hamburg, he was a hatchet man. He's being paid now. No doubt at all. He's being paid now. He's done a job. This is what is going on. Everybody's waiting to call. And so even when it's not going well, nobody can. You keep quiet just in case something comes to your way. That's what's going on. And it's no good. This country is never going to take now if we have this attitude. Mm. Well, good afternoon, Richard. Dr. R Richard Amakuba uh, to Dr. Asa Sante and uh, Benjamin Kwashi. Thank you all for joining us here on The Pulse. Well,